Hi, uh, Jonathan York Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Uh, continues to be a very choppy trade out there in the US as uh, some of the big tech uh, um, shares really taking a bit of a beating over the last sort of week or so. But uh, you know, you really got to put that into uh, sort of perspective that uh, you know, they have risen maybe sort of 40, 50% from the sort of March 23rd lows. So it's just going to be pretty interesting now to see how it sort of trades through. Certainly the U.S. Is, has recovered a little bit after the sort of, a, a, you know, COVID. Um, but again, it's interesting now to start to see the states that were seeing sort of reduction in cases are now starting to see an increase in cases coming back as the U.S. is sort of being hit by a sort of second wave. Indeed, some might even argue that it's not even a second wave, it's just uh, the sort of first wave continuing as it you know, really wasn't sort of shut down in the first place. And obviously quite a bit of political pressure out there, certainly for a vaccine. You know, President Trump keeps on talking about uh, you know, a vaccine is very close, might even be released in October. Um, that will be sort of quite uh, sort of helpful, obviously, to his election campaign as uh, the election is on uh, November the 3rd. But then you have the medical experts and the sort of CDC coming out and saying, you know, the vaccine is nowhere near close to being released in October. You know, if you're lucky if you see one this year, it's more likely next year. And that sort of, you know, contradicts uh, what the president is saying. Quite interesting as well, he's facing obviously quite a bit of criticism for his handling of uh, you know, COVID. He seems to think he's done a good job, but that's you know, against the backdrop of uh, you know, 200,000 deaths now in the US, um, that it's just ticked over that uh, milestone, and uh, over 6.5 million people infected. Now, by any metrics, those are pretty poor numbers. Also weighing on the political campaign as well, uh, you know, we've got the first uh, sort of presidential debate coming up uh, very soon. But also as well, uh, you've seen that, you know, an issue with the uh, Supreme Court um, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, passing away and that obviously creates a vacant seat on the court. Now this is sort of quite ironic because uh, you know, at the end of Obama's uh, um, term, um, there was again a vacancy on the court and the Republicans were, were pretty solid that uh, the, the new president should be the person who actually elects uh, the new, uh, and selects the new uh, um, justice going forward. But this time, surprise, surprise, the Republicans want to get it done before uh, the election. Um, you know, that obviously takes out, the, uh, takes out of the equation that, you know, the possibility that uh, President Trump doesn't win re-election and you get a Democratic uh, president. Now, this is obviously quite important because the Supreme Court justice is a lifetime appointment. And certainly in the polls, President Trump is still behind by around six to eight points to, uh, to, to uh, Joe Biden. Interesting though, despite all the choppy sort of trade out there in US equities, uh, most of the houses haven't really uh, revised down their uh, year end targets.
Oil has recovered a little bit of lost ground uh, back around just uh, around sort of $39 now on WTI. Um, you know, so that's all recovered from the sort of low 37s. Now in Europe and the UK, as we've seen sort of borders reopen, we've now seen a quite substantial spike in cases in COVID. And indeed the UK has gone back uh, now to uh, increase its uh, alert levels and sort of uh, reducing um, um, public meetings and gatherings, etc. Same in Europe as well, uh, you know, really the worry is that obviously they, as they head into winter and this virus sort of really takes hold again, then obviously, uh, you know, the health system and the hospitals just get overwhelmed. So it's just going to be very interesting now to see if the UK and Europe can really get on top of this sort of second wave and really sort of shut it down before it takes hold. And really this couldn't have come at a worse time for the UK as obviously they are still trying to negotiate the Brexit. Um, that is now you know, undoubtedly going to get, uh, get sort of extended on those sort of uh, terms before they uh, can uh, try and negotiate the deal. Now closer to home in Australia, things are getting slightly easier out there. Um, certainly they seem to have got on top of the cases a little bit. Even Victoria has seen a slight easing of uh, restrictions. Um, still nowhere near back to normal, but I say, you know, it, it's much better than it was. I'm really on the back of it, you know, the Australian economy I say is doing sort of okay at present. Um, you know, certainly the, uh, the, the sort of slowdown was nowhere near as marked as first thought and uh, the economy now is starting to recover reasonably well and certainly house prices as well as, you know, really a big driver of that. And that's really obviously on the back of record low interest rates. That's a similar case here in New Zealand as well. You know, record low interest rates are really seeing the housing market really very buoyant out there. Um, you know, certainly the predicted sort of uh, fall uh, due to the COVID lockdown really hasn't materialized. Um, certainly there was a slight easing in prices, but uh, you know, with these record low interest rates um, and sort of uh, still under, uh, a sort of undersupply out there, um, you know, you've got more demand out there. Um, certainly with the returning uh, uh, New Zealanders coming back from overseas, um, the housing market is doing pretty well. Now obviously we're getting closer to that October the 17th election. Um, we saw the first uh, leaders debate last night. Uh, both uh, sort of parties are claiming a victory. But obviously coming from a very low base at National were, um, you know, really is Labour's, uh, Labour's election to lose. What is quite interesting in the latest poll, the ACT Party and David Seymour are doing much better than anticipated. They're around sort of 7% now, and that will put uh, them in Parliament with around sort of 8 to 9 MPs. And on the latest polls at present, you'll be looking at maybe three parties uh, in, uh, in, in the new parliament, uh, possibly four if the Greens manage to get over that 5%. But at the moment, they are sort of hovering around sort of 5% and it's really touch and go.
Now, obviously, in this low interest rate environment, you know, it's really pretty tough out there for investors looking for income. Um, Auckland City just announced a bond last week that was a 30-year bond. Uh, minimum rate was uh, 2.95. It was 550 odd million. Um, one investor, came, Cornerstone investor, came in and took 300 million of that uh, that bond issue. So, you know, it is pretty tough out there if you're looking for income, but as I say there are plenty of alternatives available. If you're interested in discussing what is, what is available out there, call us on 0800 867323 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles. I'm looking forward to speaking to you soon.